Tonight, it's not just about the race, it's about the place. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bristol. you to NASCAR Countdown. Today, the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series runs 500 laps around the world's fastest half mile, Bristol Motor Speedway in Tennessee. Where Eastern Tennessee meets Western Virginia is a city of 25,000 that today grows to six times that. Give a NASCAR fan one race a year to attend, and this is the one they pick. It's the toughest ticket on the circuit, and 160,000 are filing in to see some action. 30 years ago, this track's owners installed lights for night racing to make summer events here more palatable to fans. Night racing in the Cup Series was a rarity then, but I think it's safe to say the fans liked it. The demand for tickets skyrocketed, leading to expansion and change over the years that's resulted not just NASCAR's most unique stadium, but a week-long festival of speed. Fans have been camping out here for over a week now, leading up to tonight. This was Wednesday morning. From pup tents to million-dollar motorhomes, they're all sharing the Bristol experience. The racing began Wednesday night. Kyle Busch won the Craftsman Truck Series race. There's a surprise. Uh, then Thursday, a huge fan festival downtown and the parade of haulers carrying the race cars from there to the speedway. Who says you got to have a marching band to have a parade? Yesterday, pole qualifying to set the field. Carl Edwards won the number one spot. And then last night's NASCAR Nationwide Series race won by Michigan's Brad Keselowski. It's a big buildup to a big race. One the drivers get excited for two. Jamie Little is with Kevin Harvick right now. He's a Bristol fan, huh, Jamie? Well, Bristol is certainly a place that suits this guy, Kevin Harvick. Four wins in the Nationwide Series, one in the Cup Series. Kevin, what is it about Bristol that just gets you guys pumped up? Well, I think we always have um, just had good packages here as far as uh, our, our handling package on all the cars. So it's kind of been an RCR tradition as it's gone through the years to, to run good at Bristol. But uh, it's always fit my driving style. And, and uh, I grew up on a little half-mile racetrack in Bakersfield that kind of was not, it's definitely not Bristol, but it had a lot of the same techniques I guess you'd use here. Now you and your RCR teammates just happen to be really good on these short tracks. What does it take to be good and excel here at Bristol? Yeah, I think, you know, we've, uh, we all come from short track backgrounds and I think uh, here at Bristol, you got to stay in a rhythm all night and keep your car uh, handling good, but you got to be able to run consistent speeds and not have those, you know, two or three or four laps where you run good and then fall off at the end. So. Uh, track position will be a big deal tonight, and obviously uh, looking at last night's race, I think the groove will move up and down the racetrack, but uh, it seems like the fast cars will still be from the middle down. RCR certainly will be a force to be reckoned with. Nine wins here in the Cup Series, and they swept here in the spring race. Shannon? Well, Jamie, this right here is what separates Bristol Motor Speedway from all the other tracks on the NASCAR circuit. This banking right here. From top to bottom, three stories high. It's 30 degree banking. And for the drivers here tonight, they'll go into these turns three wide. Around the track, they'll make, reach speeds of up to 135 miles per hour. And for the 160,000 fans here tonight, they completely surround the track, giving them a 360 degree view of all of the action here at Bristol Motor Speedway. It's certainly a fan favorite, and it's definitely a driver favorite. Dale Earnhardt Jr. said earlier this week that Bristol Motor Speedway is one race when he stops racing that he will continue to come to because it's just that much fun to watch. Alan? We're glad you won't be standing there once the green flag waves, <laughs> Shannon. Our ESPN pit studio right in the middle of all this. And we welcome you inside. Glad you joined us tonight for our coverage of this race. Alan Bestwick with nine-time Bristol winner Rusty Wallace, count them, and NASCAR team owner Brad Darty. What's it like for a driver, Rusty, to race here? It's it's electric. It really is, yeah, Alan. This is such a, an important track for everybody. I mean, the atmosphere, you're jacked up, you're wound up, and all these drivers, they feel the same way 
way as when they go to the Daytona 500. It's that important. They got new cars. Their pit crews are fired up. They all want to win at Bristol. It's big, man. It is big. And you heard Kevin Harvick say it. All of these guys, including this cat right here, started out with these little bull rings, beating and banging and rubbing on one another, running real aggressively. And you bring it to this. You have the best drivers in the world who get out here. They're root, gouged. You see smoke. <laughs> you see flames. You see tempers. You see it all happen under these lights. It's just exciting. It's going back to the genesis of the sport with the short track racing. It's as good as it gets when you get to Thunder Valley. You see all that stuff is going to happen again tonight. Absolutely. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> and look, and look, some good cars and good drivers in the middle of, of all that mess, too. Now this uh, racetrack was reconfigured and resurfaced about a year ago. The banking changed a little bit in the corners. There's more banking at the top of the track than there is at the bottom. How's it changed the racing? It's changed the racing big time, Alan. Instead of running just on the bottom of the racetrack all the time, now you can run the second lane, you can run the third lane. And Brad, take a look at Clint Boyer making a pass on the outside. That's what this new racetrack is doing now. Absolutely, I talked to Jeff Burton about it. He says, I know you love to see us getting after it, Brad. He says, but what you're gonna see is more side-by-side -side racing. The racing will actually be better, and there'll probably be less cautions because there's more room to run, there's more group and they can uh, grip and they can spread out and actually get after it a little bit more. Somebody's going to take a very large trophy away from here tonight. It's one of the yeah. tallest yeah. trophies on the circuit. This guy's got nine of them, including his very first cup win and his 50th win. A lot of great memories here. Oh, huh? a lot of great memories. Look at that, 1986, my very first win here in the Valleydale 500. And, and you know what? The trophy, when I won that race right Look there, that, that trophy is the same one as when I won nine races later. And it's, it's, it's just a great-looking trophy. It's exciting here at Bristol. To win my first and my 50th, boy, what a special day in my career that That's was. A lot of wins. Look at Steven, look at that little sucker. Just a little tiny dude. <laughs> we had a good time then. Uh, what Rusty told us earlier was that his hair looked a lot better in the 50th win than it did in the first. A lot better, a lot better. Man. Rusty got his first win at this track. A driver hoping to get his first win tonight. Starts on the outside of the front row. David Ruderman is with Dave Burns. And that's one of the best views you can have at this racetrack, Alan. Outside row number one. So, David, give us a sense for lap one, turn one. What's this place like? Um, well, being up front on the outside of the front row, um, I don't really know about that yet. But, uh, um, you know, just the place is intense regardless of where you start, whether you're on the, on the front row or the back. It's uh, uh, you know, a place to get your attention and uh, try to roll off in there, carry some good speed off, and uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe lead a couple here. That'd be cool. We need the bonus points. With this track reconfigured, can you power around the outside and maybe lead the first lap? Hey, you know, you saw a lot of guys. Um, you know, maybe not, maybe not on the, uh, early on, but you see a lot of guys move up as race progresses. And uh, definitely in practice yesterday, you saw a lot of guys running the top side and being pretty fast out there. So I don't think it's out of the question. We we'll just see if we can get the UPS still to do it. All right, we know we'll be watching, and it'll be fantastic to see. All right, Dave and Dave, thank you much. Coming up on the Bristol edition of NASCAR Countdown, Jeff Burton led a Childress Racing sweep in the last Bristol race back in March from winless and wondering to title contention. With only three races left before NASCAR's chase for the Sprint Cup, some big-name drivers are on the bubble, and they have to race at Bristol tonight. Oof. And we'll capture lots of the sights and sounds of the unique scene that is pre-race at Bristol, including an attempt at a Guinness Book of Records-worthy wave. Hey, man, where's he at? Bring him in here.